Welcome to the World History One lecture series. At the end of each slide, there will be a 10 second delay. Use this time to pause the presentation and complete your notes. When you are done, push play and you will move forward. This lecture will begin in 5 seconds. Welcome to World History One Lecture 5.2 on Greek Geography and I have a question for you. What does Greece and Aquaman have in common? That's right, they both rely on water. You know, H2O, Agua. You see, unlike ancient river valley civilizations, Greece is surrounded by water. An ancient Greek civilization relies on water to survive and thrive. Even now, modern Greece relies on water to survive. So today we will begin looking at Greek geography because Greek geography is different than the geography of ancient river valley civilizations and Greek geography will allow ancient Greece to develop differently. With that said, go to the next slide. We need to learn about four geographic features in order to understand Greek geography. Greece is surrounded by seas, which are smaller than oceans and are usually located where the land and ocean meet. Typically seas are partially enclosed by land. The sea I've outlined for you is the Aegean Sea, the most important of the seas that you will learn about shortly. Greece is also set on peninsulas which are pieces of land that are almost entirely surrounded by water and are attached to a larger land area. The peninsula I have outlined for you is the Peloponnesian Peninsula. Greece is further connected by straits, which are narrow bodies of water connecting two larger bodies of water. The strait that I've pointed to is called the Dardanelles. And finally, Greece includes islands a lot of islands. They are lands surrounded by water and they are smaller than continents. The island I have outlined for you is Crete. You will learn that is where Greek civilization begins. Go to the next slide. In order to understand Greek geography, you need to acknowledge or accept the fact that there is water, water everywhere. So let me outline Greek civilization so you can see just how important water was to the Greeks. There are five major seas near Greece. The Ionian Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, the Aegean Sea, which is the most important sea in Greek history, the Sea of Mamora, and the Black Sea. That's not the only water we need to know about. There are two major straits. The Strait of Dardanelles, which I pointed to in the last slide, and the Strait of Bosphorus. If you can control the Aegean Sea, and you can control a strait, you can control the area. Go to the next slide. Greek geography is so much different than river valley geography. In fact, we don't say that the water surrounds the land in Greece. Instead, we should say that the land invades the water. That's how much water we are dealing with here. So let's trace out ancient Greece once again so that we can see how the land invades the water. There are two major peninsulas in Greece, the Balkan Peninsula and the Peloponnesian Peninsula, which is the peninsula that sticks off of the Balkan Peninsula. Both of these peninsulas will be important in Greek history. Crete is an important island in Greek history. 
This is where Greek history begins, and you will see how the Greeks spread out from Crete. Asia Minor is a subcontinent. Just like India was a subcontinent, it is located to the east of Greece. This is where the Persian Empire was located. And here is where we will see the clash of the Persian Empire versus Greek civilization. And finally, Macedonia is a region that is part of the Balkan Peninsula. Macedonia becomes important because at the end of Greek history, this is the place where we find Alexander the Great. Go to the next slide. Like river valley civilizations, Greek civilization will spread from its point of origin or the place where it started. But it will spread differently than the river valley civilizations we already studied. Greek civilization started on Crete as Minoan civilization from 3000 to 1100 BCE. That's ancient era Greece. And then the Greeks will migrate to the Balkan Peninsula, southeastern Europe, as Mycenaean civilization. And they spread to coastal Asia Minor between 1600 to 1000 BCE. So this is how the Greeks spread from the ancient era into the classical era. The Greeks maintain their civilization. It's not going to get much bigger during the Dorian or Greek Dark Ages, which is from 1100 to 700 BCE, through the Archaic period, which is 700 to 480 BCE, and through Classical Greece, the Classical period, which is the Greek Golden Age, 480 to 323 BCE. And finally, Greek civilization will spread into Western Asia during the Hellenistic period from 323 to 146 BCE. This is the age of Alexander the Great. To help you, A is where Greece starts. B is the original migration of the Greeks to the mainland. C is the area where most of Greek history happens, almost all of it. And D is when Alexander the Great spreads Greece eastward. Go to the next slide. Let's talk about the other major difference geographically between river valley civilizations and Greek civilization. That's the concept of the Greek city-state. We already know that city-states are cities that control the surrounding countryside. For our purposes, we're going to learn about four city-states or regions that are important in Greek history. Macedonia, or Macedon, is around from 808 to 179 BCE. This is the homeland of Philip the Great and Alexander the Great. So Macedon is important at the end of Greek history. Troy is around from 3000 to 1250 BCE. So this is an ancient era city-state important at the beginning of Greek history. These are barbarians who are destroyed by the Greeks during the Trojan War. Athens is around from 900 BCE to right now. You can visit Athens tomorrow if you wanted to. Athens is the think tank and cradle of democracy for Greek civilization. And then there's Sparta, 650 to 192 BCE. This city is founded by Dorian invaders. These are invaders who come into Greek during the Greek Dark Age, and they are a militaristic people. What you should see is this. Greece is a civilization, but the Greeks are not a united people. Go to the next slide. One idea we'll look at this unit is the concept of wars and warfare. And to do this, we'll look at the Persian Wars, which are coming soon to a lecture near you. But like everything else, 
the way the Greeks fight battles is impacted by their geography. So let's look at several important battle sites and see how geography plays a role in wars. And for you 300 fans, this should sound familiar. Thermopylae Pass is where the Spartans fought the Persians using a phalanx technique. This is an infantry military tactic during the Second Persian War in 480 BCE. If you're going to have a Second Persian War, we have to have a first one. The Plains of Marathon are where the Athenian army beat the Persians in the First Persian War, 490 BCE. And finally, Salamis Island forms the Strait of Salamis, in which the Athenian navy destroyed the Persian navy via a pincer tactic, that's a naval military tactic, during the Second Persian War in 480 BCE. That's it for this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.